Yes, it is I, your humble host, Bill Hatch the Third, coming to you live from the Palatial Home Studios of Bob Swatch Productions here in the beautiful city of Santa Ana, California, for another episode of YWL Online's Totally Approachable Bible Study for All. Joining me as usual in studio is my friend, my brother in Christ, the disembodied voice of Rudy. Hi everybody, I love y'all. Waka 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 Lord. Is this speaker on? Yes, it is. And joining us at, uh, and joining us uh, from a more than acceptable safe social distance through the miracle of telephony is my father, Chaplain Bill Hatch. How are you doing, Pop? Well, it was like you I'm doing fine, but it was like you had never done that portion of intro before. I know. I'm distracted by ding dongs. I'm distracted by the ding dongs. There you go. <laughs> Folks, that's an Amazon order, part of an Amazon order that came to the house. Yeah. It's not that he's saying anything is ding dong ish. <laughs> it really is real ding dong. Distracted, distracted by you ding dongs. You are what you eat. But anyway, we are doing well out here in Poplar Bluff. Uh, you got snow on the ground? Oh, no. Uh uh-uh. uh. Oh. No, no, no. It's it, the sun's out. Uh, there are clouds, but there the sun's out, and we're uh, doing pretty well, all things considered. Okay, that's awesome. You know, we've got a lot of great material to uh, to go through today, and uh, mm-hmm. but first we have time for a Rudy minute. Waka 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 the Lord. That's well, I didn't get no sleep last night. Sometimes I don't go to sleep. I don't know why. So I was looking at YouTube and I was watching Josephus and there was five other historians that mentioned Jesus in the books. One of them uh, called, uh, he was the king of the Jews. One of them said that uh, Jesus was um, uh, uh, like a prophet or something, but they mentioned that Jesus was in the round of the time. See, and I like to hear stuff like that because they were not, following jesus they were neutral they just took the minutes of the of whatever was historic and they put jesus because it was, he was an historic a person because they, they killed him and then it was a big deal because he had followers but then they do say that there was a couple of other people but then they put john the baptist the john the baptist mm-hmm. As a God too, but they, they were mistaken because he was a uh, uh, just a the, the follower of God to open the path for God. But they mentioned another person, but but they mentioned Jesus was the King of the Jews, and I like to hear things from neutral people because they were there. See, if I was there, I would have been like, "Oh man, that's Jesus," uh, but I would have followed him. But uh, so that's what's good. Look up things like that, peoples, because it's nice, it's good. Because you know what. I always I love God and sometimes I thought how do I do I really know do I love Jesus do I really know so it was for me my relaxation my uh whatever I got a tattoo on my face and it says uh six three sixteen John and there's a <laughs> tattoo and what it is I'm not I'm not gonna work no more and I'm gonna live the life that's good and you know what and i will never be able to back down or they say rudy i'm gonna chop your head off because you love jesus i was ah, 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 ah. so i want to go in there straight smiling and say take a little off the top i love you all waka 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 with the lord oh mercy yeah yes walk with the lord <laughs> and yes it's okay to read other things that Mm-hmm. agree with the bible you should be careful about some of the misleading things yeah. and we're not here to do that today so nope. we're not going to get into too much of that at all uh but always walk with the lord for certain and be ready to go to be with him at a moment's notice yes indeed and that's where we are. So Psalm 114 and yes. following. And following. <laughs> uh, just be, we had a home inspection earlier that just finished. And when I was r- rushing uh, to get all set up for the program today, 
I misplaced one of the Bibles I had been using for the topical headings of Psalms. Ah. And I found that the NIV and the Revised Standard Version Bibles don't always have the subtitles. Mm -hmm. And no, I didn't say lose, I meant misplaced. misplaced. Because, misplaced. yeah, the producer put it away. Ah. Point being is that we really do want to help you who are tuning in mm -hmm. to see how the different translations work and don't work uh, for us when we're trying to learn about the Bible. And so uh, maybe you are looking at a Bible that doesn't have a subtext for each of the Psalms. Uh, that's okay. It's still because that's not actually part of the Bible. Right. It does give a further insight and the way different generations have looked at uh, at, at the, these various topics. Mm -hmm. So saying that, Bill, do you have anything you want to start off with? Sure. Um, you know, yeah, just, uh, just on yours, not just uh, generations, but different people with different I don't want to say purposes, but uh, focuses, focus. Um, sure. And uh, you focuses know because is better. <laughs> but uh, um, because they're uh, because the different translators are focused on different things. Like some, um, like the uh, like the Legacy Standard, go through and translate the words one by one to be literally what the 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 original text says and uh, um and while books like the amplified try to ex try to expand and give you the meaning of the passage and uh, they're not looking at words word by word yeah. and then uh, and then others are somewhere in between them um and so you get very different things depending on uh, on which uh, on which translation you uh, you read and what they're focused on uh, on giving you. And it's good to have those kinds of different opinions. Mm -hmm. That's why I like so much like the uh, U Bible. Is it called U version? U version of the Bible. Uh -huh. uh, the 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 app. The app on my phone, yeah. it's got a bazillion, mm -hmm. well, maybe only a million different <laughs> translations on the one app. Mm -hmm. So you can look at it until you say, oh, that's what this particular passage is saying in, to one person and another person. And we can draw our own conclusions. Right. As long as our conclusions reach the point of saying, Jesus is the Son of God and our Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Oh yeah, that's, and of that's course, what it is. remember that uh, the different that some translations use different manuscripts too. So uh, yes. um, you know, like the King James uses one set of manuscripts, and the NIV uses a different set of manuscripts. Yep. Um, and uh, <laughs> and they were all scholars working. Uh, to help people have an understanding of the Bible. Yeah. And that's what the authorized King James was all about. Right. Wasn't the first translation in English. Uh, and I have one of those. I can't think of the name of it at, at the moment. Uh, it was done in the 1500s. Mm -hmm. Oh, shucks. Maybe it doesn't the, the matter. Uh, it's too or, hard to yeah. read. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Geneva. The Geneva. Geneva. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yes. The Geneva is a tough one. And it is very difficult to read. Yeah. <laughs> but for those of you who like to have history and whatnot, if you have a King James Bible and it has one of the forewords in it, mm -hmm. read that forward. Yeah. Uh, it is really interesting to be able to have it and to say, really? In, in that translation, the forward, the authors, compilers, compilers Translators. of it say literally that we are doing this for the people of this age. Yeah. Future ages should do their own translation works so they can understand it in their own time frame. Yeah. 
uh, and that is very important. Now I'm rambling at this point, but let's go to 114. Let's indeed. I have one, one that says the Lord works wonders. Okay. The uh, the Amplified says God's rescue of Israel from Egypt. And mine's God's deliverance of Israel. Okay. Is another one. What uh, else the English Standard. I've got uh, tremble at the presence of the Lord. The, uh, let's see, oh, the Berean Standard, a Psalm of Exodus. And okay. uh, the King James says, tremble at the presence of the Lord. Okay. And my daily Bible study book mm -hmm. says, uh, 114 commemorates God's mighty deeds during the Exodus from Egypt. Okay. It, and so, it does. That's uh, basically yes. what it's about. <laughs> but if you're a Bible studier, as we all should be, mm -hmm. and you look at one fourteen, and it says God's deliverance of Israel by itself, you can't tell that it's from Egypt. Mm -hmm. You have to get into the psalm itself. You can't just rely on the sub right. subtitles. Right. And Especially if you don't God, have one. The Lord's... <laughs> Yeah, the Lord works wonders, really doesn't come close to giving a good subtopic. Mm -hmm. So, uh, there, I have some interesting notes on 114. Bill, do you have any that you want to bring out? Uh, let's see. Um, Amplified says uh, in verse 3, the Red Sea looked and fled, the Jordan turned back. Um, says that uh, some of the ancient rabbis said that the sea saw God's right hand placed on Moses. Others said that it saw God's name engraved on Moses' staff. Hmm. Okay. Uh, my, trans my study Bible doesn't say the Red Sea at all. It just says the sea looked and fled, hmm. the Jordan turned back. Uh, so, you know, if you are studying, you can remember what that's referring to without knowing it's the Red Sea. Right. Uh, any others, Bill? Uh, no, I think that's it. Okay. I have some. And it says, despite sitting between two groups of praise psalms, Psalms 114 does not contain the word praise. Nevertheless, 114 is definitely a praise psalm presenting praiseworthy examples of God's incredible power. And then they all, excuse me a moment. Uh, it says, the author indicates that the same group of people departs from a foreign nation and becomes the people among whom God establishes his royal residence. Oh my, we're having an interruption. So if the sound background sound is too much, Bill, let me know. I shall. Uh, uh, let's see, what other things do I have on 114? Oh, that's pretty well it. Uh, so, all right, the interruption has been <laughs> delayed. So we're back online there. So that's what I have for 114. Yeah. Knowing that it is, in fact, referencing God's praiseworthy uh, efforts with getting them out of Egypt and into the promised land. And certainly the amazing miracles of parting the Red Sea or the Reed Sea mm -hmm. and then the Jordan. Right, and the beginning so and the, the end of the Exodus. The beginning and ends. But it really isn't that way when you look at the 10 plagues that God brought about against all the Egyptian gods. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have that definitely before us, before the beginning of, as we were saying, yeah. for the parting of the Red Sea. But that's all right. You know, it is indeed a psalm of praise without using the word praise. Let's move on to 115. Okay. 
Let's see, I have in the Amplified, Pagan Idols Contrasted with the Lord. Mm, okay. And then the English Standard, To Your Name Give Glory. And the Brian Standard, mm -hmm. To Your Name Be the Glory. Uh, so, and it mentioned Psalm 135, 1 through 21. So some homework for today. And the King James Bible is also to your name give glory. All right. In the contemporary, mine says the Lord deserves to be praised. In my study Bible, it's glory to God alone. And let's see, in my daily reading, it says 115, contrast the one true sovereign God of the universe with impotent earthly idols. Okay. So that's a mouthful, but it certainly is uh, that it's glory to God alone. There's worthlessness and, and going from there. Yes. Do you have any others? Uh, let's are, see. Uh... In, my, uh, in my study Bible, it mentions that the praise psalm appears to be antiphonal in nature, which, of course, antiphonal means, uh, means like a call and response. Um, following uh, the outline and pattern of, let's see, the verses, verses 1 through 8 is the people, verses 9 through 11 is the priests, verses 12 and 13 are the people again, verses 14 and 15 are the priests, uh, and then uh, the people are again in 16 to 18. Okay. Uh, I have notes again from this study Bible. Mm -hmm. That says the creator alone deserves praise. By contrast, the nation's idols, not their nation, but other nations' right. idols, uh, are unable to accomplish anything. Mm. I like that type yeah. of reference. That is a good one. Um, I also God's have people. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yes. No, no that's I also right. have uh, I also have a note here that says it could be a post-exilic psalm um, that uh, may have been read uh, first or sung first at the dedication of the Second Temple in uh, Ezra 6.16. Okay. That would put certainly uh, put a time frame on it, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. Uh, and we can consider that. They can still be, you know, referencing all the house of Aaron, trust in the Lord, etc., mm -hmm. etc., uh pretty much uh wiped out on the house of Aaron at this point in time i think if it's after the uh exile to Babylon. from return from exile in babylon <laughs> uh i have people are to trust in god and the true god helps and blesses all who follow him but i would really like us all to look briefly at Psalm, I'm sorry, verse 16. Um, it gives us a responsibility, again, that reemphasizes that. It says, the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he has given to the human race. Okay. He did that in Genesis chapter 1. Yeah. Do you have a different translation for verse 16? It's, it's pretty close. Uh, the heavens are the heavens of the Lord, but the earth he has given to the children of men. He gave it to the children of men, but when Satan got cast out from heaven, Satan managed to come down here. So it really gives us a challenge mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> to have uh, responsibility here in the world. Yeah. Because we have to take care of this planet, right? We really do. Yeah, I mean, we can't uh, uh, we, we... we can't stop the eventual uh, apocalypse um, that will happen, but uh, we can certainly do what we can to take care of it now because we don't know when that's going to happen. Um, right. And but that's physically taking care of the world, right? But also, we have the spiritual yes arguments with Satan. Yes, indeed. And we cannot ignore that. I still like to reference the fact, though, in Ephesians chapter 6, it talks about the armor of God, mm -hmm. but it's to stand firm against the devil, not to chase after him. 
Right. And of course, I really do believe we should not go out looking for trouble. Yeah. Because when it comes to Satan, he is still quite strong, even though he's been defeated. Right. Defeated, but he doesn't know it yet. <laughs> yeah. He knows scripture and doesn't understand them. So right. that really does jump out at us for real, yeah. real emphasis. But I think that verse in there is a strong reminder. We have a responsibility for our world. Yeah. Anything else on 115, Bill? Uh, no. no. I think that's it. Am I rushing, am I rushing too fast? Because I really didn't want to get into 119 today. <laughs> we may anyway. We may. All right, let's move on to 116. Okay. I have one that says, when the Lord saves you from death. Okay, hold on a second. Turning the electronic page. <laughs> I have in the Amplified Thanksgiving for Rescue from Death. <laughs> the, uh, the English Standard, oh, Okay, the English Standard took the uh, took the wimpy way out. <laughs> I'm teasing, okay. of course. It says I love the Lord. Like uh, the the wow. uh, yeah. But see how different that yeah. is. Yeah, no, totally. We have we we see these uh, different again approaches. Mm -hmm. One of mine other uh, of mine says thanks to God for deliverance. Right. Your turn. Uh, the Brian says the Lord has heard my voice. And uh, the King okay. James says, he listens to my voice. Okay. Now, listening has not come into my study of today on this psalm. Interesting. Uh, so that's that's rather fun. I have another one that says, 116 is a psalm of thanksgiving for the Lord's many deliverances in the midst of distressing situations. Okay. Um, and I, I can appreciate that. I have in my study Bible, this is an intensely personal thank you psalm to the Lord for saving the psalmist from death. The occasion and author remain unknown, although the language used by Jonah in his prayer from the fish's stomach is remarkably similar. While this appears to deal with physical death, the same song could be sung by those who have been saved from spiritual death. Um, I have another point that says it speaks of the psalmist relief at suffering, surviving an encounter with death and of his subsequent praise to God. Mm -hmm. Very similar yeah. to what is being said. Uh, verse one strikes me in the point that it says, I love the Lord because he has heard my appeal for mercy. Okay. In other words, that sounds like tit for tat to me. A little bit. He's done this. I can do that. Which does sound kind uh, of Jonah-ish. <laughs> it does. Of course, Jonah in his book really never learned. No. But, uh. Uh, my my translation of verse 1 is slightly different. Um, I love the okay. Lord because he hears and continues to hear my voice and my supplications. I think that sounds a whole lot better than the translation yeah. I had on it. But we've still got a tit for tat uh, thing going on here. Um, it is, which, but it's not as stark as no, this no. one. It sounds like rather... Uh, He's heard my appeal for mercy, so I'm going to say I'm grateful. Right. Folks, if any of you have been brought up in churches, do not worry if you feel like you have never been challenged by God before, or not God, but by the devil before. Mm -hmm. One, wait around. I'm sure it'll happen. Right. Although there is a real, a real truth to the statement that if Satan isn't challenging you at least a little, what are you doing uh, to support God to make him yeah. the devil angry? Right. What have you uh, What have you actually done? 
it's kind of like yeah, uh, are you doing anything for the kingdom right it's kind of mm -hmm. like what i've said in the past uh um you know if you haven't upset someone you haven't done anything or said anything you know that is highly possible yeah um, um yeah and but it doesn't mean that you haven't been overcoming those things also no. it's a personal relationship between you and god right none of us should be trying to pass judgments on other folks nope uh, a, uh a, and we meet those challenges head on as they have come up your your relationship with god is intensely personal however it should not be private because you should be nobody else to know where uh, nobody else knows about it right so uh one of the one of the former uh, state ministers for American Baptist churches mm -hmm. of the Pacific Southwest, uh, he gave definite reminders, uh, or he was sharing that when he went back for one of his school reunions, uh, one of his fellow classmates literally said i didn't know you were a christian yeah. and it bothered him greatly and as it should because he felt like he was a, being a christian all through his high school mm -hmm. years but that's an impression that he made on at least one of the alumni yeah. and so he tried to make sure that it was obvious from then on for sure yeah Heard one story from uh, from someone who uh, um, who was moving and uh, um, and uh, their uh, their neighbor said, uh, "Yeah, you know, one of these things I got to check out uh, your Mormon church." Oh, oh, yeah. It's like ow. Yeah, so it's like it, it's even one thing to to be known as a as a kind giving or uh, or or that living that kind of lifestyle. But not be known that you're Christian, not a Mormon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Um, yeah. There are too many who take away from the Bible and others who add so much to it. Yeah. It's literally the Judaizers in reverse. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, with that particular group the Muslims who came 500 years, 700 years after Jesus mm -hmm. and the Quran that says Jesus was a good prophet of God, but mm -hmm. Muhammad's uh, teachings take priority, just like right. the Mormons say Joseph Smith does. Mm -hmm. His teachings take priority. Mm -hmm. It's just not true, folks. Uh, but I don't want to get into no, any no. more of the putting down. We want to look now at the shortest chapter in the Bible. <laughs> Psalm 117. Oh, wait a second. I did have uh, oh, I did have a couple notes on, on 116. Sorry, we got so so carried away. Please. In uh, verse 6, um, let's see, where is it? Uh, the Lord protects the simple childlike, simple or childlike. I was brought low, humbled and discouraged, and he saved me. Um Let's see, the uh, Jewish tradition, uh, this became a common saying to explain how some people could do ill-advised things and not suffer for them. <laughs> yeah, my, my translation is, the Lord guards the inexperienced, mm -hmm. I was helpless, and he saved me. Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. <laughs> yes. Uh, Return to your rest, O oh my soul. Yes, the Lord has been good to us, and and it's probably the the Lord and uh, through His guardian angels have probably saved many, many, many people from things they don't even realize. Yes. Um, now this oh, psalmist yeah. did, does miss the point from Genesis uh, by making the soul sort of a separate entity within themselves, mm. because. God breathed the breath of life, and we became a living soul. Right. That is unique to humankind. It is not in the animals that way. Right. That doesn't mean that animals aren't in heaven. We already know that they are. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but 
it's just be, you know, just because it doesn't say <laughs> before we, we can take yeah. rest in the Lord, but we don't want our souls to be a separate entity within us. Right. We do have God and Jesus in our hearts. We're told that yes. when we accept Jesus, they reside within us. And that's a pretty awesome uh, thought and responsibility. Talk about taking care of the world. We need to take care of ourselves because God is here in us. Yep. Uh, you know, we have responsibilities as Christians. So you said you have another I have one more. Um, in verse 15, precious and of great consequence in the sight of the Lord is the death of his godly ones, so he watches over them. Um, the, uh, the ancient rabbis interpreted this verse to mean that it is hard for God to declare death upon the righteous. So God doesn't like it, uh, apparently, when, uh, when righteous people uh, die. Um, even though we, right. we do it and we are all destined to die but once um, and then to face judgments. Um, so, uh, but, uh, um, but yeah, God doesn't want bad things to happen to us. No, he doesn't. And not that death in and of itself and, is a bad thing. It's just a thing. And it certainly seems like he set up Adam and Eve to not have anything bad happen to them. Right. But they overstepped the boundaries. Yep, they did. And we aren't. We've looked at that before, back in first three chapters. Yep. Of Genesis. We have indeed. Uh, primarily, primarily chapter three <laughs> for the what happened when Adam and Eve let sin get a real foothold uh, in their lives, and the rest of us have that to follow. Yes, indeed. All right. Now we can get to 116. This. We just did 116. Oh, we did? Yeah, that's what we were just doing. I thought we, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I meant 117. Oh, I'm one behind them. Uh, this very long psalm, I'm going to go ahead and, no, I won't. I, we will read it. So we can say we read through a whole psalm today. <laughs> Uh, all right. One of the titles I have is Come Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, uh, is that what it says no. on yours? No, no. Okay. Uh, let's see. I have a psalm of praise in the Amplified. Uh, the English Standard. The universal oh. call to praise. Okay. Sorry. It's okay. Uh, let's see. In the English Standard, I have The Lord's Faithfulness Endures Forever. Wow, the title's almost longer than the psalm. <laughs> Practically. Uh, one of my daily reading ones says 117 is a simple call to praise. Okay. Um, the Berean Standard titles it, It Stole Him, All You Peoples. I like that. You don't see the word extol all, all that long. The King James says the same thing, but has an exclamation point at the end of it. So I get the thing stole him all you people. <laughs> that that really was too high pitched for my speaker, but oh, okay. you might want to watch that on yours. Uh all right. Yeah, Here my, my voice broke. Mean. Yep. <laughs> Praise the Lord, all nations. Glorify him, all peoples, for his faithful love to us is great. The Lord's faithfulness endures forever. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, indeed. Which is praise the Lord. Yep. A command. And so it's, it begins and ends with the same, even though it's using the hallelujah instead of praise the Lord uh, at the beginning in the translation I read. Mm -hmm. And we have the important part. Yes, it's the shortest chapter in the Bible. Yep. Uh, not the shortest verse. Nope. That's on 11, where Jesus wept. But here we have uh, the very, very important reference that all peoples should praise the Lord. That's basically as close as most of the Old Testament got to extending out God's kingdom information to the world. Is if they happen to hear these uh praises 
that were going on in mm -hmm. synagogues and for traveling uh, Jews, not just Jews, but Israelites. Mm -hmm. Because they were supposed to take it further out than themselves. Yeah. And they didn't do a very good job of that. Yep. Yeah. We're back to but the private salvation. Not a, not a good yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. So, any other little boxes uh, on this? Yeah. Um, Paul uh, quotes this, uh, this uh, oh, wait a minute. Ca Paul quotes 17, 117.1 1 in uh, Romans 15.11 to make the point that from the very beginning of time, God has pursued a worldwide redemptive purpose. Okay. Um, let's see here. Let me see what the intro, oops, too far. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see. One seventeen, one and two. Uh, the my study Bible says the seal of redemptive truth is bound up in this diminutive but seminal psalm. Its profundity far outdistances its size. The 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 intro to this uh, to this psalm is longer than the psalm. I mean, literally that. Um, literally, yes. Uh, it exhibits three distinguished. When you, when you... Go ahead. When you remove the praise the Lord from the beginning to the end, at the end, it, the psalm inside of that is definitely yeah. shorter than some of the intros that we've read today. <laughs> um, but yeah, it uh, let's see, exhibits three distinguishing features. One, it is the shortest psalm. Two, it is the shortest chapter in the Bible. And three, it is the middle chapter of the Bible. I had forgotten yep. that. Uh, that God looked redemptively beyond the borders of Israel in the Old Testament is made clear here. The psalm looks back to God's intent for Adam and Eve in Eden and looks ahead to the ultimate fulfillment in the new heavens and earth. Um, it reminds me uh, that uh, um, about uh, Noah's, uh, um, Noah's blessing to Shem, and, well, to Shem and Japheth. Japheth. Of course, he gives uh, this great blessing to Shem, and Shem's people eventually become known as the Semites, of which the Jewish people are one. Um, and uh, um, Japheth, uh, to Japheth, Japheth, he gives a, uh, a blessing that he shall dwell in the tents of Shem and, uh, um, and share in Shem's blessings. Well, the Japhethites become the Gentiles, which are us. And uh, um, so definitely, uh, definitely, God had uh, God had intent to uh, to have redemption go beyond the uh, the realm of uh, of the Jew of the Jewish people, um, mm -hmm. not to shrink His kingdom, but to grow it. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, but that's just me. Okay. <laughs> uh. You got anything else for 117? No, not really. I was no I was trying to look to see why none of my notes sit, reminded us or reminded me that it was the middle chapter of the entire Bible. Uh, but I didn't find it there at all. Uh-huh. So that surprised me. So Psalm 118. 118. My study Bible says Thanksgiving for victory. And the Amplified says Thanksgiving for the Lord's saving goodness. The, uh, then, oh, go ahead. My uh, daily Bible says 118 is a psalm of thanksgiving to be sung as worshipers enter into the temple. Okay. Um, let's see, the English Standard uh, calls it His Steadfast Love Endures Forever. The Berean Standard says The Lord is on my side, which I think is a bit of a, uh, a misnomer. It should say th that I am on the Lord's side. Mm. Um, and the King James uh, says Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His Lord... <laughs> His love endures forever. I, I can hardly finish without saying that. Yeah. Uh, let's see. The Lord is always merciful is another title I have. 
Um, so they're in keeping. Mm -hmm. um, my study it's Bible does point out something interesting. Okay. Uh, the MacArthur, that is. Um, this song, along with Psalm 110, is intensely messianic and thus the most quoted by the New Testament. And it gives the list. <laughs> Neither the author nor the specific circumstances of the psalm are identified. Two reasonable possibilities could be entertained. One, it was written during Moses' day in the Exodus. Or two, it was written sometime after the Jews returned to Jerusalem from exile. Probably it was the former, given, one, the nature of the Egyptian Hillel, uh, that's Psalm 114, and two, it is, it's used by the Jewish community, especially at Passover. Three, the close similarity to Moses' experience in the Exodus. And four, the striking similarity in language uh, with, uh, let's see, um, uh, gives a list. And uh, five, the particularly pointed messianic significance as it relates to the redemption provided by Christ, our Passover. Uh, for, and it mentions 1 Corinthians 5, 7. Okay. Uh, it seems reasonable to propose that, this, that Moses possibly wrote this beautiful psalm to look back and worship at the historical Passover and look ahead and wonder to the spiritual Passover in Christ. So I don't know if I would suggest necessarily that this is uh, a Moses uh, song, but uh, it could be. Yeah, it, it's possible, certainly. But as you say, it's not probable. Right. right. It's possible, but not probable. Certainly the uh, repetition of his love endures forever. Mm -hmm. Um that that shows up strongly throughout yeah this could be an uh, antiphonal faithful love this could be an antiphonal and, you're right they call many churches several churches will use this as a responsive reading yeah uh i can appreciate responsive readings in church mm -hmm. uh, i wish you know more would do it because it gets people speaking parts of the bible out loud yeah this particular psalm, though the people's response is always to say, his love endures forever. And that can get tiring without, you know, it's like, okay, this is what I have to say again, instead of being able to look at other points of scripture and having people repeat them differently mm -hmm. so that they can uh, feel. I encourage people to read out loud mm -hmm. the bible it sounds differently to themselves to themselves or to others right. doesn't matter uh yeah you can certainly be more comfortable saying the scriptures out loud to yourself yeah uh, <laughs> as compared to well i don't want people to hear my mispronunciations uh and they happen to all of us, by the way, because we're using different translations so often. Yeah. When churches are able to put the scripture references uh, of the Sunday messages up on a screen, I think is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Because to have, well, this we show it every time we're doing these psalms. Mm -hmm. We have so many different translations out there. Yeah. Uh, that it's not, I don't think it's healthy to be reading translations in church while everybody's gathered and everybody's getting different impressions. Mm -hmm. This last Sunday, I didn't take the Bible in from the car, and mm -hmm. I usually pull it up on my app anyway, but I decided I wanted larger print, so I grabbed Bible from the pew in front of us, and it's does the Beatitudes. Or we were on the Beatitudes, actually, just the first one. But the ver the translation I I picked up literally said, "God blesses those people," instead of "Blessed be the humble, for they shall inherit the earth." 
but it's like God blesses mm-hmm. those people. I didn't like that translation. And so I went back to the one that was up on the screen. And that's the way we all should. We find a translation that is meaningful to us. And I didn't want, you know, those people <laughs> in a translation. It's us. Mm-hmm. We are those people. Us. Uh-huh. Yeah. So anyway, it's there. Um, now I've forgotten where we are. We're in 118. I know we're in Psalm 118. I know that part. Did I finish with the Lord is always merciful? Uh, I think so. Okay. Um, and that's the way that one reads. Yeah, but uh, um, I do have some uh, some footnotes that you probably have as well. Please share. Well, in uh, in verse 22, the Amplified wants to remind us that uh, that this verse has been used uh, in uh, in the New Testament. Uh, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Oh. The chief cornerstone. Um, now there are more notes, more to this note. Uh, this refers either to the prominent stone at the top of a corner tower, or perhaps more likely to the stone at the foundation of a corner, the first stone laid for a structure. Uh, the special significance of the latter is that the shape of its sides determined how the walls were laid out. The verse refers prophetically to Jesus the Messiah. But the ancient rabbis interpreted it as a reference to David, who started as a humble shepherd, not the background one would expect for a king. Some prophetic passages refer to an event in the past that is a precursor or foreshadowing of the future prophetic event. So, uh, so this is one of those ones that has two interpretations. Um, of course, I always, uh, when thinking about those, I always remember uh, I have called my son out of Egypt, which of course has uh, has two uh, two meanings, um, mm-hmm. and uh, is one of my favorite dual meaning ones. Um, let's see. I've also got a note in twenty seven. Um, let's see. Twenty seven says the Lord is God, and He has given us light, illuminating us with His grace and freedom and joy. Bind the festival sacrifices with cords to the horns of the altar. Um, Literally, it's not cords, it's branches. Um, In Jewish tradition, this is interpreted as a ritual for the Feast of Booths. The term festival is understood as as a reference to the lulav, several branches bound together and later placed against the altar so that they reach to the top of the horns and bend over the altar. Interesting. Yeah. I thought so. Really? I mean, it is. Uh, Anything that can help us view the ancient uh, traditions and what was going on uh, in our mind's eye, that is, um, is certainly uh, certainly interesting and good. Um, I, I like it when we come across things that we can go, oh, so that's kind of what it probably looked like. What it would have been to experience this, and mm-hmm. uh, um, you know, uh, and and uh, be able to uh, bring it into our personal realities, if you will. I know that when our family was allowing me to do a uh, moving ministry of as, as a. Navy Reserve Chaplain, we got to travel well all over the country. Oh, yeah. Continental US. Yep. And I don't know if you remember it, but it was very stark visual effect. I mean, I had been through Bible college and seminary mm-hmm. and seen pictures of the tabernacle and the Ark of the Covenant. Mm-hmm. But we stopped at one place in uh, Pennsylvania in the Amish country, Mm -hmm. and we saw a full-sized layout. No, it wasn't full-sized, was it? Because we got to look down at it. But it was much bigger than anything I had seen before of the tabernacle Mm -hmm. layout. And seeing uh, just how 
amazingly put together it was. Yeah. And uh, the same thing with the temple. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we... God's awesome. He is. And to be able to see how much uh, the people really did worship him, unfortunately, the Jewish people or the Israelites would not share it outside their borders right. uh, without strong coercion, <laughs> like, like taking a, a big submarine ride uh, for Jonah. Right. You know, that, that's really the extent of their not sharing. Mm -hmm with the world, what God had for the world. Yeah. And as Christians, we must do that. Yep. We must carry it forward and on. Oh, yeah. Um, though I do remember, I had forgotten specifically about, uh, about the, uh, about getting to see the, uh, the, t the tabernacle recreation. Um, but, uh, um, but uh, yeah, the, um, our time, uh, our time, because that was me in high school. Uh, at the end of high school was uh, was when we were doing that. Um, I do remember um, the difference it made in uh, in things like history when we would be at mm -hmm. the places uh, that uh, that we were talking about in the history uh, classes. Um, you know, and that was that's really something. If you have a chance, an opportunity to see and touch. Um, ancient things or or replicas of those things definitely take it because it changes completely the way you uh, the way you look at those events that happen um, and uh, uh, touching ancient things yeah folks I'll shake hands with any of you <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, but yeah so uh, um, I am an antique now huh? you you is an antique <laughs> an antique you <laughs> But uh, um, but yeah, um, you know it it changes your experience of these things to uh, to have a personal connection to them. Um, that's one of the reasons why I got those uh, why I got those uh, um, widow's mites was uh, because yes. they're ancient. They're really they're really inexpensive too. Um, but uh, uh, but basically they allow you to have a personal connection to the ancient story. And uh, and it changes the way it registers in your brain um, to uh, to do that, and so uh, so I highly recommend uh, um, doing those kinds of things, whether it be for secular history or uh, or or holy history, religious history, um, mm -hmm. and uh, um, definitely uh, for religious history. But um, you know, you should yep. take those opportunities when they come. I I fully agree. Um, sometime go try to find a mustard seed. Mm -hmm. The size of it is so tiny. Yeah. And the same thing is true with the widow's mites. Uh, we <laughs> just have the ability to say we love the Lord and wow, this is the kind of references that we have to use in our understanding. Yep. How are we doing on time? We're so? there. We uh, we made it. Oh, good. <laughs> I didn't want to get into 119 today. No. Because I don't want to cut it short. Right. Uh, but I don't want to drag on with it either. Right. But next week might be one of those examples where we only get through one or two songs. Yeah, it's possible. Because there is so much in, in Psalm 119. Yes, indeed. The longest chapter in the Bible. Yep. We just did the shortest. Next week we do the longest. Exactly. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, if you have come this far with us, gentle inquisitor, perhaps you will come a little bit further and join us in this family we call Christianity. We do this not by sacrifice, for Christ is taking care of that sacrifice once and for all. Amen. And uh, um, you know, through his uh, his death and resurrection, um, we are uh, we are truly saved. Um, we don't use magical spells or mystical ceremonies either. Uh, some people consider the the uh, the sinner's prayer to be a magic spell that uh, if you say these words, you'll magically get into heaven, and that's not true. Um, you ha the Bible tells us you must speak with your lips and believe in your heart, 
And so, uh, so you must change your heart uh, when you say these words. And uh, that's exactly what it's for, is to, is to change your heart and align it with that of the Lord's. Um, mm. And so, uh, because the Bible says that all have sinned and continually fall short of the glory of God. And uh, so whether you've been a believer for a second or a century, we are all in need of a realignment. Um, you know, uh, um, yeah, and uh, because we've all, uh, we've all done something. And so uh, we invite you to say the sinner's prayer with us today, uh, as we do uh, at the end of each episode of YWL Online. And, uh, um, and so we'll do this together. So here we go. Dear Lord. Dear Lord. I am a sinner. I am a sinner. Cleanse me of my wickedness. Cleanse me of my wickedness. Show me how to love you with all my heart, mind, soul, and strength. Show me how to better love you with my heart, mind, soul, and strength. And teach me how to love my neighbor as myself. Teach me how to love my neighbor as myself. Uh, guide my steps along the path you would have me take. Continue guiding my steps along the path you would have me take. And help me to do the work you have for me in the building of your kingdom. And may I continue doing the work you have for me in your kingdom. Come into my heart and be the Lord and Savior of my life. Remain in my heart, being Lord and Savior. And help me. Uh... Oh, no, that's it. Uh, you know, all these things we pray and more in Jesus' name. Amen. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted. Uh, uh, Rudy, I heard something. Rudy yeah, Rudy's trying but... to uh, trying to get the dogs out to their uh, to their uh, um, grooming appointment, <clears throat> even though the grooming appointment's not for another fifty five minutes. So, but uh, um, he he definitely. Uh, is the type that uh, if you can't be on time be early um but uh but anyway that's uh that's uh pretty much it um you know uh of course uh the next thing to do is to find yourself a bible believing church with a bible preaching pastor and plenty of christians you can fellowship with um and uh so uh you might find a midweek uh bible study or vespers or or something of that nature, or a prayer meeting, just a prayer meeting, um, and uh, um, that you can participate in and find out what your next steps are going to be. So, uh, so go ahead and do that, and uh, then uh, uh, then come back here for more shows, because uh, on Thursday, uh, let's see, I have to I have to look it up because it just changed. Um, one of my guests uh, was unable to uh, to attend on when on Thursday. So uh, let's see. My new guest list for Thursday is G. S. Gary. Of uh, let's see, um, he is the award winning author of Meth, Murder, and Amazon. Uh, so we'll find out about that. Um, he. Uh, Likes to talk about embracing the struggles and righting some wrongs along the way, helping others laugh their way to a better today. So, uh, which isn't bad. Um, and then uh, we will. Oh, okay. We still have uh, Karen Ford, um, who is a, uh, a wealth and money management coach. So uh, um, we'll have some interesting conversations there, and uh, um, and it'll be uh, it'll be good. So uh, so don't miss uh, not quite after midnight on uh, on Thursday, and then on Saturday we'll be having another episode of YWL Online's Anything Can Happen Saturday, where we are trying to get where we are working our way to the end of Doctor Barnett's uh, fifty two greatest chapters of the Bible, um, and uh, this week's chapter is James one two and three. Yes. <laughs> Very so a uh, little, little more than a chapter, but uh, uh, but yeah, so James 1 through 3, which he has titled Faith, Temptation, and Tongues. 
Um, so uh, we'll get to learn more about that. So go ahead and read James 1 through 3. And then, of course, uh, um, for uh, for YWL Online's uh, Totally Approachable Bible Study for All next Tuesday, uh, we will be doing Psalm 119, the longest psalm in the Bible. Um, maybe go ahead and read Psalm 120 just to be safe. Yeah, longest chapter, longest psalm. Um, go ahead and read that 119 and 120 just to be on the safe side. But, uh, um, but yeah, uh, yeah, Psalm 119 is going to be interesting. So <laughs> We hope but, to make sure that it's interesting. Yes, yes. but uh, it is definitely, uh, definitely a long one. So, uh, um, so definitely read it so you can contribute to the conversation. Speaking of the conversation, uh, you can certainly uh, reach out to us uh, through, uh, through the comments here um, or through direct messaging. Um, I certainly get uh, direct messaging through, uh, through Facebook. Um, that's uh, the fastest and surest way to... Uh... You okay? That's all right. Okay. Um, and uh, um, you know to make sure that uh, that I get the message, and then uh, but uh, um, but I can get the messages through any of the uh, any service or uh, that uh, that you might uh, um, that you might want to comment through. Um, so uh, if you've missed any past episodes, be sure to scroll down the page you're on and uh, find them and listen to them um, so that you can catch up and uh, and be connected. Um, with uh, with us, um, so uh, so yeah, so I think that's it. Um, with that, uh, we've come to the end of another episode of YWL Online's totally approachable Bible study for all. And uh, I will ask you: Do you have anything to say to the nice people? Rudy's not here. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, I will say God's blessing. From Poplar Bluff, Missouri, and for Rudy, I will say, and remember, waka, waka, waka with the Lord. Indeed. And uh, from Santa Ana, uh, also God's blessings. Uh, be safe out there. Remember to wash your hands and watch the ending credits. Good night, fo or good day, folks. <laughs> good whatever. Good whatever. Uh, oh, hold on. Thank you all for tuning in. This has been a presentation of Bald Spots Productions. I'd like to thank my producer, my beloved mother, Eileen Hatch. I, of course, am your humble host. I'd like to thank my co-host, my beloved father, Chaplain Bill Hatch, and my beloved Ed McMahon, Rudy Corlew. Please support the show if you feel so led over on Patreon.com. We're known as Bald Spots Pro. There are some interesting uh, rewards for supporting the show. Don't you dare miss Not Quite After Midnight. Uh, we're there on Facebook and wherever fine podcasts are offered. Uh, please like, comment, and share to stay informed. You know, subscribe, follow, whatever it is you got to do to stay informed and kick that algorithm into gear because that's how we reach more people, which, of course, is the point. Uh, if you or someone you know needs support now, call or text 988 or chat. 988lifeline.org. Thank you again for tuning in and have yourselves a wonderful whenever.